Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel troops. Today we're gonna start the wiring of the RX-7. This is a video I've been putting off for a long time because wiring this thing up is gonna be no no easy task. Um, I'm gonna be using the Max ECU wiring loom and yeah, just building a full engine loom. So you guys are gonna come with me. It'll probably take me a few days to go over and do it all, um, nipping in and out of the house. But yeah, first things first. Yeah. Oh, it's a scary thought. But I've been putting it off long enough. It's just time to get in, dig in, one wire at a time, that's all it is, and uh, push on and see if we can get this thing wired up. Right, <coughs> so here we are. Um, oil temp sensor, gonna use here, and I'm just gonna put a plug on it just now. So this this type of plug is like amp waterproof club plug. Um, so it's just this sort of crimps you need. It's like the butterfly style or whatever you call it, which folds over um, the pieces themselves. So um, let's get show it to it and hopefully this camera can pick up exactly what it looks like. Right, so first things first when you do these, you've got to make sure you put on these environmental seals first. And then, yeah, you're not going to be able to see it in the camera, but it is crimped down nicely. Um, so I'll do it to the other one, push it in. And uh, these guys are just, obviously they're waterproof and they're nice and easy to use and commonly available um, never had an issue with them so there we have it um, yeah nice and simple sealed up there nicely pins are through and uh, we'll stick this into the sump um, yeah so I've used these connectors as well for this is like ABS so I have a front ABS rear ABS we're using that for the traction control on this as I mentioned in the last video um, and yeah so what I've done is I've put all the stock plugs in their locations and uh, crank pickup and the cam and water temp and all this jazz I am only going to use one uh, cam position sensor um, just the inlet cam so I can actually calculate the VVT um, VVT the VTC the cam angle because um, it just calculates the difference between the crank and the cam and uh, then it can dictate using closed loop PWM to maintain uh, uh, degrees of a uh, camshaft so uh, that's the easiest way to do that and yeah the day guys gotta apologize i am full of the cold and it's not corona it just seems to be one of them summer colds so um feeling like shit but we just gotta keep cracking on you know what i mean there's no excuses now no excuses let's drill the sump stick this in with a heap of honda bond and uh leave it at that So what I've decided to do is uh, take the sump plug off and uh, drill and tap that so I could then fit it inside here. So And uh, yeah, screw that down and then stick that back in. It sticks down a little bit but it's not too bad. There we have it. So it's just going to sit nicely up there and uh, yeah, we'll get to it. Right, so progress has been made. Um, I've got the ECU plug on this side here. The wiring is everywhere just now. However, I've been separating the looms over, like for instance, this one here is for Lambda. Um, these are all the inputs and outputs, analogs, um, and basically sorting out the ignition wires. This is obviously ground, our main engine ground, uh, cabling, you know, to throttle body, um, inlet manifold to temp. You know, boost sources, um, hall effect sensors for, um, not sensors, the cable in for my crank and home signal. So, yeah, just sort of laying everything out in a general sort of place, just so I can get an idea of the looms I'm going to make up. Right, so cracking on with it anyway. Um, a lot less wires hanging about now. Um, I've got uh, quite a few here I need to sort out. There's a lot of interior uh, wire I'm going to have to do. So I've got the plate up here ready to go. Uh, obviously, main relay and relays for fans and stuff like that. Um, and one spare. And uh, the loom literally comes up now through here. Um, this one's here. I've just put tie wraps in here in a couple of different places just so I can actually see the way the body of the loom goes because you have a couple of off takes. Um, 
So generally it comes up here and then we have this one here which is a map sensor, um, intake air temp sensor and uh, throttle body, you know for that is 6 throttle body. Um, so that will all sort of plug in on this loom itself. Then I have another loom that comes off the side um, which is just uh, all four injectors and a live. So the live will obviously go to them all and then you have injectors off each one. Um, and then another loom that comes over the top here. Uh, so we have the blue ones which is going to every single one of the coils. Um, so one, two, three, four, and we have a main coil live to each of them. Uh, we also have going down here a uh, 12 volts and a 5 volts um, with sensor grounds also uh, going down to here because we've got various switches and stuff. For this one here's VTC for instance. This one's here the actual VTEC switch, um, and this one here is VTEC oil pressure switch. I'm using the VTEC oil pressure switch to act as one of the 4D maps. So um, I'll engage VTEC. However, I won't go into the VTEC map until it sees VTEC oil pressures activated. And at least I know everything's long enough, so that's always good uh, that we're not going to have to like cut and shunt the loom. Uh, and there was more than enough cables, which I'm happy with, so yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll probably start looming this up with tape. And uh, I'll add these in later on. These are the digital inputs for... Um, the ABS but I'll, I'll actually do this inside the car because I have a VR conditioner so if you guys remember a while back I was telling you the difference between uh, sort of Hall effect and VR sensors VR sensors being an AC sine wave and the faster it goes the higher the voltage the higher the frequency um, and that dictates speed however it gets to quite high voltages the ECUs don't tend to like so um, another option is Hall Effect, which is 5 volts, and the Hall Effect is digital, so it's on and off in a square wave. Um, so you get these little things here called a VR conditioner, uh, and these VR conditioners basically take a sine wave and uh, convert it into Hall Effect, so um, much safer for the ECU. And it can also help amplify the signal as well if you've got a bit of a weak signal. So um, definitely going to use one of them, which would be fine. Um, so that way I'll have front and rear speed sensors, um, driven and undriven wheels. So that'll aid me for the traction control. Um, just really excited to get on with that. Ho ho! It's a new day. It's a new dawn. And uh, we've got the steering wheel on, obviously. But not only that is, look. Whoop whoop! Got in the police. I uh, stuck on this piece here, just uh, so I can remove the steering wheel any time and then plug it in again, it's uh, just USB, so see here, just like that, oh yes, so nice and easy, um, stick it on and I'll probably mount this up here somewhere, um, just so I can still remove the wheel and stuff like that and still have the flappy paddles, so uh, yes. Well, let's crack on the day to get some more stuff done, more wiring, and uh, keep cracking on, sensor at a time. So, I reckoned what I'd do would be do the furthest one away first, which is that oil uh, temp. So, uh, as you can see here, I've done the connector, it's all crimped in there nicely, got some heat shrink and some braiding on. So, it's going to be a mix of braiding and a mix of um, tesser tape because, uh, well, one, it's a pain in the ass to run and braid it if you're not future planning, but yeah, getting somewhere now. So, uh, as you can see, these are all done. So, obviously, got oil temp, oil pressure, crank sensor, VTEC oil pressure, VTEC switch, VTC switch, all in this loom off by itself. So, uh, that's this side done, which I'm happy about. Um, next thing what I'm going to go on to is doing the coil packs. So, uh, uh, yeah, let's crack on with that. Best friend, she's 23. She left her body in Harvard above me. My best 
close friend for 23 I heard the heavens crying about me They gained an angel, I lost a friend I felt like dying again and again Alright guys, so it's day 3 Um, got new shoes Wiring still needs to be done Let's crack on with it Firstly though, look at these titanium bolts from an inland manifold, a thermal gasket, a quick release V-band and uh, some of these absolute beasts. Do you guys remember I was going to be running these uh, boosty clamps, however they're fixed, they don't have any give. So a company called ERC, uh, Elite Racing Components, got in touch. So they've got these styles. Check this ones. They flex. Not only that, is their quick release by pin. So you push the button, pull them out, and uh, completely releases free. So uh, buzzing to get them on. But that's going to be in a separate vid. That'll be in the next vid. And as if by magic, we now have injectors. <laughs> So yeah, injector loom is on, coil loom is on. As it stands, I could technically try and start this and uh, I would see crank signal and stuff like that, but if I do that, I'll just get too excited and forget about the main stuff, like having an actual pedal position working. So uh, yeah, it's prob probably, I'm looking at my arm there, I've not even got a watch. <laughs> Pretty tired, it's about two, three in the morning. Um, so yeah, long days. Uh, been busy mapping stuff during the day. I was mapping a Turbo MX-5 today, and uh, yeah, long day was for the kids and that. But I have to keep cracking on. You know, it's not gonna get done myself. It's not gonna, nothing can get done for you. You need to do it yourself. Um, so just gonna crack on, guys. And uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do now is loom this up, and I need to put a plug in the end for the lambda sensor. Oh yes, we're getting somewhere. So that's it all loomed up now. Uh, tucked away all nicely um, I've got to do some tidying up with tie wraps and stuff like that there however I'm leaving it loose just now because I'll probably have to like move stuff around when I'm doing the intercooling radiator install um, so last thing is basically to do the uh, lambda control so uh, ugh. Sometimes the clicker's a bit dodgy, eh? Aha! That's better. <coughs> All done now, so, uh, yeah, that can just plug into the sensor, uh, which is up here. Plug it in, and... Hey, hey! Nice click. Obviously, I need to take off... ...the cap. I'm not sure if it does a free air calibration. It may, it may not. Um, I'm unsure, because, obviously, First time for everything. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, engine bay wiring is now complete. I just need to put in, um, finish off the ABS for the front. I need to put in, there's two fans at the front. So, there's a fan for the radiator and there's a fan for the oil cooler for the DCT. So, um, yeah, we're getting there. Next is inside the car. That'll be tomorrow because uh, it's far too late now. Really sleepy, um, so tomorrow's a new day. Day four in the big brother house. <laughs> How's it going guys? Right, so cracking on with this build. Uh, what I've done is obviously finished up the engine bay stuff, so that's done. Uh, now inside the car, I've got a couple of things I want to do. This one here, for instance, is a 12 position switch. So um, what I've done is I've put on, how's the way to say, welded, uh, soldered these resistors on every single point. And these resistors are 1k ohm resistors and uh, the idea of this is every position I go to gives a different resistance. In hand, when you put a 5 volt, volt supply to it, it will change voltage on an output. So what that does, in the max ECU you can have an input for a 0 to 5 volt multi-position switch. So you can then dictate in each individual step of voltage what... Um, the function does so um, whether it be launch control whether it be anti-lag whether it be traction control severity you can have 
so many things on the switch so 12 position switch that's what i'm going to be using so yeah i've got this up here um i'll have five volts on one uh sensor ground on the other and this one here will be actually input to it so that's the downside with this really is basically when it comes to resistors if if one of the resistors was to fail or short out you're like potentially giving yourself an asbo there if you like get pulled by the police and then all of a sudden anti-lag enables <laughs> <laughs> How it works, obviously, you've seen the resistors. I thought I'd show you before it's sealed up, well it's already sealed up now. I just used a heap of uh, tiger seal just to kind of seal it up so nothing's short out and a bit of tape. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, 0 0.97k ohms, what's well, around about 1k ohms. And uh, as I adjust this you'll see, so that's one position, there's two position, three four five six seven eight you get the gist you get the gist so um yeah so that varying resistance obviously changes the output voltage and uh that output voltage determines what the function is hello guys how's it going day five day five i think it's day five yeah got some serious progress done serious progress Look at the state of the wiring, however, as you can see the loom is getting shorter and smaller and things are starting to be plugged in. Uh, we have here, obviously a steering wheel is plugged in with our little USB flexible cable and uh, I'll show you this. So if we put on the battery, just a little bit and uh, switch on the dash, we have firstly the digi dash, you guys remember this, this is this power tune dash um, so we'll let that load up a wee second and you'll see VTEC loading yeah VTEC kicked in yo and Honda <laughs> uh, yeah so if you listen to this that's all my relay is firing obviously the light in here you don't really need it with this light with the GoPro but you know how it goes and the uh, boost Oh, hello. So uh, we now have the gearbox powered up. And as you can see here, if I dim this down, you can see the lights are coming on in the gear sticks. So uh, yeah, the reason I'm actually gonna be putting um, the gearbox on a separate switch is because when you do updates and stuff like that um, to the gearbox, um, you know, when you're flashing it with some firmware or doing fault finding on it, cause you just diagnose these gearboxes like you do a car with an OBD port. Um, so I have INPA and stuff like that for uh, BMW Diagnostics and uh, yeah that, that's the way you do it so tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the CAN system set up um, CAN bus between the ECU, the dash and um, the gearbox itself I'm going to finish off some wiring here behind this panel I'm going to wire in the 12 point switch and that is pretty much it for wiring so uh if I get to that stage, I'll connect up the laptop and we'll see what sensors are saying what and uh, maybe even try and give it a crank and see if we can uh, get some a signal, at least of an RPM signal on the ECU, that would be pretty cool. Everything's on the right switches, uh, the wee dash is working again. Um, I just need to go to uh, up here to internet and uh, connect my internet and then I should go for there but if you guys remember I had this thing there we go as you can see the mouse cursor off this so it's handy for if you want to edit gauges and stuff like that so yeah I'm gonna go get my wi-fi password and uh, get the cable to plug in the laptop <laughs> right guys so uh, what I've done is I've updated the ECU and uh, all of a sudden it just sort of sprung into life I could hear noises and stuff like that, so uh, yeah, here's the throttle body and I'll show you it working. So RS6 throttle body, 83mm inside diameter, give it some throttle, look how fast that goes. So, buzz on to that, working an absolute treat. Uh, yeah, gonna go over a few other sensors, make sure things work, and uh, look at the gearbox stuff. I need to do a gearbox update, but <laughs> oh, guys, it's coming together now. Seriously, coming together now. So, um, as you can see here, switch is light off, so you can see 
Um, I've got a table here, so on the side here I've got main pedal position percentage and this is actually the target position so the reason for this is like I'm moving that so that's 28% throttle however it's only going to give like 15 so basically when you're cruising around the place and stuff like that you want because it's a big throttle body I want to have the low down sort of controllability so right so last thing I'm going to do tonight I'm going to get a cable um, probably probably this bit of cable and I'm going to put a crimp at the end of it I'm going to run it into the car and uh, as a starter motor wire and I'm going to see if I can get a crank to see if we get crank signals so um, if we do fucking buzzing if we don't it's not a problem I'll just look into it at some point point. Um, it's easy to go through these things and figure it out because again I've just put it in the sort of settings and uh, using different sort of settings from anyone else because that's just how I work, you know what I mean? So yeah, what I'm going to do is run this cable just now into the car and uh, touch it on live and see if it, when we crank it to see if we get a signal. Um, I've just run this cable out here just now, right out into the car, right into the star motor. I will sort it in a little bit, but <coughs> we shall see. Well, first things first, I'm not going to look at that. I'm just going to crank it. Oh fuck, that's a fuel pump. I'll actually pull the fuse to the fuel pump so it doesn't keep running dry. Um, let's see if... Let's see if it... Should... Yeah, it's better. Still got throttle. Oh yes, right. Try and crank it. Oh damn, VTEC just kicked in, yo! <laughs> right, so... Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to have a look at RPM. If we see an RPM there guys, I'm not joking, I'm going to bloody scream. Uh, I'll take this off for you. No RPM. Not necessarily a bad thing, I could have a crack angle sensor off or anything, so I'm going to look into it and see the settings to see what I've got on here. So what I do here is uh, if I just go down into trigger logger uh, and then I'll go, let's see what we've got here, go normal, we're after the crank. So I think the crank's got 12 teeth on it. So I think we click start, uh, AC and then, right, okay let's crank it over and see what we can see. Well that's good. So count these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 10, 11, 12, that's fine. Jesus. I thought there was 13 there. First Honda in history to have 13 tooth fucking crank wheel. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, so that's picking up an RPM signal there. Let's look at um, the home slash cam, which I think is just one. So Yeah, so that's picking that up. So that's good. Happy with that. Um, so it's most likely just the settings I've got in the ECU, so. Right, so in inputs and trigger and home, um, I had a look down here and uh, there's a couple for Honda. I've got Honda K20 12 plus one, which is I've got, which is without cam sensor. Um, I've got cam sensor, um, so I'll be putting that in. So I had K20 A2 with cam sensor and it didn't work. So um, I think that's actually looking for exhaust cam sensor as well. So we'll just put this one here and uh, we'll see if this one works in. So RPM. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Oh, what? How easy is this thing, man? I love it. I love this ECU. I really do love it. It's, uh, it's a fucking awesome bit of kit. I love seeing all this data, like, to a guy that does a bit of tuning and stuff like that. Data, like, it's so satisfying to see. And uh, things can jump at you straight away. And seeing that trigger and stuff like that there, I was confident that I was going to be able to get an RPM. It was more just one of my settings. So, yeah. Um, really happy with that. So, I'll save that right now. Save. And this is just testament to like, this Max ECU, the closed loop side of things. So, throttle position, I'm moving my feet here, 
but throttle position and e throttle is done closed loop and the closed loop settings is how close it gets to the target you know you're commanding 30 percent is the throttle getting the 30 percent and check this main throttle position and target throttle position and you just look at that error absolutely nothing so that is proper cool ah oh, this has just made my night this has made my week i'm proper happy now so guys it's been a very long journey doing the wire in this car uh i hope you guys have enjoyed it or at least taken something from it anyway it's been a uh, it's been tough but we just keep pushing on with it, the usual. Um, but yeah, we're at the stage now, we've got an RPM, so I could stick some fuel in this now. Oh, I need to run some fuel lines, uh, turn key, and the hood should start. So yeah, I'm proper happy with that. I'm gonna leave this video as it is just now because I want to keep it wired in. I've still got a lot of stuff to do, intercooler, radiator, and stuff like that, a lot of TIG weld and aluminium. Um, and then this thing is good to go, so uh, yeah, again guys, thank you very much for coming along and watching the video. If you made it this far, you should be commended. You should be commended and knighted by the fucking queen herself. Or himself. Him, herself. Ah, uh, it's late like. You guys take care and we'll catch you in the next vid. Cheers.